Welcome to the Sonic Cinema Podcast. My name is Brian Scuttle. I'm the critic and proprietor of www.sonic-cinema.com. I wanted to use my first episode to introduce myself to anyone who's not familiar with my writing on Sonic Cinema, which will tie into the subject of my first podcast, which is the 1946 Frank Capra holiday classic, It's a Wonderful Life. I first began writing about films in 1996 when the Atlanta Journal-Constitution started a You Be the Critic area in the entertainment section of the newspaper on Fridays. The first review I had published in this section was The People vs. Larry Flint in January of 1997, and by the time that the section was discontinued in 2000, my review for The Cell put me at over 60 contributions for the area. In addition to these short write-ups, I also began writing longer reviews about movies I loved, which originally started out of a proposed book my mother wanted us to do together, but then it continued out of a need to just write out my thoughts on movies in general. In 1999, I began sending out emails to friends and family members of my reviews. This practice continues to this day, although the emails have gotten fewer in number, and the format has changed over the years to where I basically just send out the links to the reviews, as well as maybe a teaser or two of the review itself. It was in the year 2000 when I first had the idea to create a website to house my reviews, as well as my various musical projects, and the name Sonic Cinema seemed like a natural one, although it wouldn't become a reality until 2004. In the time that I had really become passionate about movies, the soundtracks for them were a central part to how I connected to a film, which made sense given my musical background. In 1995, I almost obsessively listened to the score by the late James Horner for Braveheart over the summer, and it was at this point that I decided that I wanted to write film music. The next year, I began study at Georgia State University, working towards a degree in music industry sound recording technologies, which for me seemed like a good entry point. I first started putting pencil to manuscript paper in 1998 and have been writing music ever since, although sometimes have been more productive than others, such as the life of a creative artist. Once the idea of composing for film planned itself in my head, my dreams and aspirations for life suddenly got much bigger and more ambitious. The reality, however, has never really matched up. After college, I spent the first few months unemployed, trying to find a job at a recording studio, and I went on one interview for an internship and sent out a lot of resumes, but nothing ever panned out. I eventually got a job at a nearby movie theater, and I've been there ever since. So the dreams for my life have never really worked out the way I wanted them to for one reason or another, but the reality of my life has been more rewarding than I ever expected it would be when I first got that job in November of 2001. The friends, the experiences, and the fact that, as fate would have it, I started working there at the same time my future wife did are just a few of the surprises I had waiting for me that day. My life couldn't have turned out better in retrospect. In this way, I have much in common with George Bailey, the hero played by James Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life. Even though the film had been a Christmas tradition in a lot of households, mine never really involved watching Capper's film, made after he and Jimmy Stewart had returned home from World War II. While we watched TV and the occasional movie together, especially when my grandfather would come to visit over the holidays, It's a Wonderful Life never really made it into my family's rotation. The first time I saw the film in its entirety was around Thanksgiving of 2000. It was the first Thanksgiving after my grandfather had passed away, and even though it goes to a dark place in the second half of the movie, it was a reassuring film to watch that year. It helped me realize that even when I got depressed and life seemed to have little for me at times, there was always a light at the end of the tunnel, and the message that Clarence writes in the cover of Tom Sawyer for George, No Man is a Failure Who Has Friends, resonated strongly for me then, and has continued to resonate for me. Over the years, however, George Bailey's story has taken on a different, more important meaning to me. One of the things that makes Capper's film a genuinely great one is how it builds to its central idea subtly throughout the entire run of the film without really saying it. One way to look at George's story is to see how his dreams of traveling the world, going to school, and shaking the dirt of his hometown of Bedford Falls off his shoes are thwarted time and again, often due to the responsibilities when it comes to his family, and in particular, the building and loan his father ran his whole life. 
This bitterness comes to a head when on Christmas Eve, his Uncle Billy misplaces a deposit, putting not only the business at risk, but also the possibility of George going to jail. The pain and frustration with his life, how it never worked out quite the way he thought it should have, leads him to hurt his wife Mary and children when, rather than tell them what's wrong, takes it out on them in a rage that is terrifying and has been building up his whole life. He then goes to a bridge to kill himself, and it's there where Clarence, his guardian angel, intervenes, first by giving George a purpose to help another person, which has been in his blood since he was a boy and saved his brother Harry when they were kids, then by giving him a chance to see what life would be like if he had never been born. After a few missteps, George realizes the weight and truth of what Clarence is showing him, and it's a sobering moment. After he frightens Mary again, this time by practically costing her outside the library when she gets off work, talking about how she's his wife and they have a family, even though he, she doesn't remember it, he returns to the bridge where Clarence showed up, asking him to put things back the way they were. He has a real appreciation for the life he has lived and has seen what being away from his loved ones could have led to for them. The happy ending Capper weaves for George is wholly earned, not just the work of a writer or director who gratuitously needed one. For the first few years I spent at the movie theater after college, I developed friendships and connections with the people I worked with, but I also had my sights set on those bigger dreams and ambitions I had when I was younger. The first couple of years, I still tried to find employment at a recording studio, although that continued to go nowhere. I tried to search online for ways to break into the world of film as a composer, to no avail. And after helping a coworker out on some short films he worked on in 2005, I started writing my own, thinking doing it myself would be the best way to introduce myself, as it were, as a creative artist. All this time, I continued to cultivate my love of writing about and discussing movies through Sonic Cinema in ways that would expand in a variety of directions over the years, which I'll discuss at a later time. Fourteen years after starting at the movie theater, I'm still there, working as an assistant manager and alongside some of the same people who have been there for almost as long as I have. And as a career, film music and filmmaking has never really happened for me. While I'll admit that this has caused some degree of depression and a sense of failure in me over the years, I'm not bitter or upset about my life at all. I no longer think about what might have been if only I had gotten a recording studio job or moved to Nashville or L.A. to find work because honestly, I started to think of what my life might have been like if I had. Over the years, it became obvious that I had a lot of emotional baggage to unpack and a lot of work on myself to do in order to become the best version of myself. And being surrounded by the specific people in my life I have been and the experiences I've shared with them has been a huge part of why I've made the progress I have in trying to get to that best version of myself. Like George, I had big plans for my life when I was growing up, and also like George, I realized that just because those plans never really happened for me, yet still haven't given up hope, that doesn't mean my life has been a failure in any way. Point in fact, it's been truly wonderful, with my recent marriage giving me a real sense of more great days ahead. Well, that does it for the first episode of the Sonic Cinema podcast. I know it was a short one, but I wanted to start out relatively light my first time out. We'll probably go into a bit longer detail in the future, depending on the subject. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you'll come back in future weeks for more at www.sonic-cinema.com. This is Brian Scuttle, signing off as I have in the past, with a musical finale. <laughs>